Welcome everyone to Live at Alive. I am Lady E and this is Pastor Roman D and we pastor Alive Church in Kansas City, Missouri. And so we are excited to have you join us tonight. Thank you. Just to put it out there, you can connect with us on our YouTube page at The Alive Church KC and you can also connect with us on our Facebook page, also The Alive Church KC. So tonight we are going to have a special treat. Yeah. These, uh, Faith Giants in the room, right? <laughs> yeah, are right. going to wrap up the series that we've been doing on faith. And so I'm so excited. And if you've been tuning in for the last couple of weeks, you know that Pastor and I have been going in on faith and he's really been answering a lot of questions that we've been having. And so tonight is just kind of an open forum where I'm going to be asking these Faith Giants that I have <laughs> on the line with us questions tonight to help you be able to live your best life by faith. So I just want to introduce Will and Rochelle Parker. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, people. It's yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> boy. They are kingdom builders. They are entrepreneurs, real estate investors. I can't name everything that they do, but just know that they are completely awesome. And they are authors. And so tonight, you're going to want to pick up this book after you you finish this session with us. Um, so, Pastor, what you want to tell the people uh, tonight? Hey, people, y'all are in for a treat. I'm not going to delay it much longer, but I'm excited to have my brother and my sister on. These ain't these people ain't like family. They are family. Yeah. So the live experience, yeah. let us give a nice, warm welcome to Will and Rochelle Parker. Hey, hey, what's up? What's, what's going up? On? What it do? What it do? <laughs> How y'all doing? Thanks for having us, uh, Pastor yeah. Roman D and yeah. Lady E. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So let, let's go and get so into we're gonna go ahead and just dive right yeah. into faith. And so the first thing that I have is I want to talk about understanding your spiritual authority mm-hmm. in walking by faith. What is it that people mm-hmm. want to know? What do you want to tell the people about their spiritual authority that they're able to mm-hmm. call those things that be not as though they are? And that goes for anybody. Anybody can jump in. And oh, you know, one, one of the things that's so important, that that's so wonderful, the reason why we, we, we expanded to just helping people get saved, but living a life of the abundant life that Jesus yeah. came to die was to understand our authority. It is yeah. so, so vital. It is crazy how we see Christians living beneath of what God has called them to do. Mm-hmm. And it's simply because of the lack of knowledge. Yeah. They yeah, don't exactly. understand that, hey, I don't have to deal with this my whole life. Right. I don't have to struggle with sickness my whole life. I don't have to struggle with lack. And, and this topic of faith, it is something that we're called to live by and so and so it's something that our authority that we need to learn we need to dive into the word of god parker jr what you think bro man you know that that word authority just jumps right out at me and and pastor roman d you really said it man Uh, for some reason the body of christ the christians those who have accepted jesus christ as their lord and savior for some reason, they lack on authority, but the world doesn't. That's mm-hmm. true. The, That's the true. world speak stronger and, and they'll, they'll speak more authority mm-hmm. than us. Yep. They mm-hmm. live more sometimes by mm-hmm. Christian principles mm-hmm. than they really understand. That's true. Mm-hmm. You know, Christians, we're, we're, for some reason, uh, I don't know if it's from bad teaching. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's from lack of studying, but for oh, some that. reason... We won't walk into walk into the God given authority, yep. you know, that's been actually given to us. Yeah, you're right. So it blows me away. But I see a lot of non believers, people that's not of the faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I see them walk into authority all the time. Mm-hmm. They might blame it on the universe, but yeah. they're still speaking. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's what, like, you said it. You said a couple of things. You said bad teaching, mm-hmm. and you said what was the second one? You said, um. Uh, it was pretty much bad teaching. I yeah. think that's what I chalk it up to is that somewhere down the line, the people <clears> of the, the people of God have been told that we have to take a vow of poverty. Mm. And I have my suspicions about where that comes from, but it's not the word of God. Mm-hmm. God did not tell us that we have to take a vow of poverty and be just poor, beat down, run over, you know, people to prove that we love him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Actually, we're a better example of him when we show the world what he's given us mm-hmm. and what he's entitled, well, given us mm-hmm. um, in terms of the power that he's given us uh, through the Holy Spirit on earth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. 
Mm -hmm. You know, Will, you said you hit the nail on the head when you said that um, the world exercises more faith principles than Mm -hmm. Christians do, because that rolls into my next question which would be the trend of positivity versus faith and so Mm -hmm. there are a lot of people who are very positive and they're saying the universe and they're Mm -hmm. saying you know that they're in faith and they're they're saying positive confessions but they may not be seeing that Mm -hmm. uh, that faith you know producing in their life because really they're just in positivity so can you Mm -hmm. guys break down for the people what does it mean to be in positive and really walking by faith? What's the hey, difference? I, I like this one. I like this one because this is something we call optimism versus faith. Yeah. yeah. Optimism mm-hmm. is a hopeful expectation, hopeful expectation for your future and your future success. Mm-hmm. That means speaking positive, uh, thinking that your future is going to have great outcome. You're hoping it's going to happen. Yeah. But see, that's not faith. Yeah. See, mm-hmm. when, when you're walking in faith, we understand that it already has happened. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. See, exactly. optimism mm-hmm. and, exactly. and positive thinking is saying what you wish to come. Yeah, I hope it happens. Right. I hope mm-hmm. it happens. I don't know if it is. I think it might happen. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pray it happens. Yeah, right. I'm, yeah. I'm going to reach for it and maybe I can grab it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Faith mm-hmm. is saying it's already done. Yeah. Right. You're already in the place. Yeah. You already have the car yeah. when you don't have the yeah. car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You already have yeah. the house when you already, when you don't have the but house. There's exactly. a lot of believers that don't believe even that. And yeah. that's where the whole authority kind of either starts or stops. If you don't believe that God has already made everything available yeah. and you access mm-hmm. it through faith, then you won't even think it's possible. Then you will be in optimism. Yeah. I'm hoping and a wishing and a praying, but God mm-hmm. has already done it. And he's given us authority to call those things that are not as though they are. And when we speak things as Mm -hmm. as men and women of faith, they happen. Now, don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. Optimism is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the first step. That's the first level. But you can't stay there. So back to what you said, Lady E, the reason is not happening for them because they stay on that level. Mm -hmm. They don't go to the faith level. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would even say I would ask the question, do we really believe the word? Because at the core of what is based on is based on the word. The reason yeah. why we can be so confident and say we already have healing is because the word says by his stripes, yep. we are healed. Mm-hmm. It doesn't yes. say we are trying to get healed. Yep. That's right. Exactly. If it's in his will, we will get yeah. healed. Yeah. It yeah. says by his stripes, we are healed. Yep. And when we as believers stand yep. boldly on the word of God, mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. when that yep. faith arises and, yep. it, and it affects everything everything around us. We get so caught up in seeing what's going on around us that we completely ignore this word that has the power to change whatever goes around us. So as we're living by faith, we're living with the foundation that the word is true, that the word will do exactly what it said it would do. And so we have a confidence and a boldness. And that's the reason why we can have no money in our pocket and say the blessing of the Lord is upon yep. me and it makes me rich. That's <laughs> right. Without painful toil, without yep. sweat and tear. Why? Because we're standing on what God says. Yes. God's word is true. Because yes. if we didn't have the word, we wouldn't have any faith. That's right. That's exactly. right. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. Well, now, that's right. If we didn't have the word, we wouldn't have anything to stand mm-hmm. on, believe on, whether it's relationally, professionally, mm-hmm. financially, yeah. emotionally, or even spiritually. We wouldn't yeah. even know how to move and operate. And that's why I think we got to be careful on making sure the world understands us. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because here's the church another church's problem we want the world to understand a level that they don't have a clue about right. exactly yeah. yeah exactly yeah that's right and so, exactly. so we just gotta walk in it we gotta walk in it and that's when our authority comes in yeah. that's when we see miracles signs and wonders happening that everyone are blown away about but we're yeah. like hey the word already promised us this so exactly. that's what yeah. we're standing on exactly but you know what pastor I mean, you said a key you said something that was very key um, though it's having people around you that mm-hmm. will agree with your faith, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. believe the word of God the way you believe it. Because when you're around people who are not people of faith and they start saying, oh, that's not going to happen. Oh, that's far-fetched. Or, oh, you don't deserve it. 
right. because you've done this, this, and that. Um, that's when people find it even harder to just stand on faith. The word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we have to make sure that we're hearing, hearing the word of God, not just by reading it out loud and not mm-hmm. just by hearing messages by different pastors, but hearing it from each other, Yeah, hearing right. it from women and men uh, of mm-hmm. the faith. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And so I want to talk, I want to switch gears a little bit and talk about something that I don't hear a lot about when people talk about faith. And so if we're believing that it's already done mm-hmm. and we're believing that it has manifested already, what part does worship have in Ooh. faith? Ooh. Wow. Wor- worship really, worship. worship really is you understanding and expressing that it's already done. That's it. Because, That's it. because now what you're doing is you're saying, you're saying, God, thank you for what I have, even though it's not in my hand, even though I can't sense it with my natural senses, I can't see it. I can't touch it. Mm -hmm. I can't smell it because I believe your word and I'm standing in the authority that you've given me. Mm -hmm. God, you are worthy for doing and manifesting what I'm believing that your word has made a promise to me. And so really it takes your worship to a whole nother level because you can be worshiping in front of bills. You can be worshiping and get evicted. You can be worshiping and getting your car repossessed. You can be worshiping in the midst of what it seems like your darkest moment. Why? Because you're not seeing just the now. You exactly. already seen yourself obtain the favor. You already seen yourself obtaining the blessing. You've allowed your, your emotions to even feel and hit the excitement yeah. Yeah. and exactly. so worship exactly. plays a vital part i would even argue you're really not walking in faith if there's no worship to back it up well, that's good yeah hey that's true good. true and, and, and that's facts pastor roman d mm-hmm. and i would definitely say it's one of the key ingredients uh one of the things i like to eat is banana pudding Everybody that know me know I love banana pudding. But when you're cooking banana pudding and making banana pudding, you need the bananas. Yeah. You need yeah. the wafers. Yeah. You need the actual puddings. Mm-hmm. You need to add the banana or vanilla abstract in there. Uh-huh. You need you need the whipped cream if you use whipped cream. <laughs> All these different ingredients, mm-hmm. and and then and then once you once you mix them and place them how you want them, mm-hmm. you put it in the refrigerator and let them sit. Yes. Now all these different ingredients make banana pudding. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so if you take one of those ingredients out, uh-huh. it affects the banana yeah. pudding. Yeah. So the worship is a key ingredient. Yeah. You're praying, you're asking, you're yeah. believing that you receive, but yeah. the worship is a key ingredient yeah. of yeah. faith. Without that key ingredient, yeah. your, your faith is not going to come to pass because you're right, Pastor Roman D, you said it. Uh, that worship is really you settling down yeah. saying, Oh, thank you, God. It's yeah. it's over. I got it. Yeah. That, that worship is taking your, your level of faith up another notch. Yeah. Shoot, that worship can push your belief level even up. Yeah. Because yeah, sure yeah. you can be believing, but mm-hmm. after worshiping and being on your knees and mm-hmm. crying and bowing your yeah. head and you thanking God, because what worship also do, it reminds you of what he's already yeah. done. Yeah. Right. So yeah. you're worshiping that is done, but it also reminds yeah. you that it, it's yeah. already been done. So it starts making you remember, which which actually strengthens your faith yeah. and strengthens your belief. Yeah. And it serves <laughs> as an encouragement to people, too, because, you know, sometimes people know when you're going through challenges and for them to see you Mm -hmm. declaring the word of God, declaring that it's already done, worshiping God um, and just honoring God with your whole lifestyle, everything that you say, it makes them, it it, it, it serves Mm -hmm. as encouragement to them and instruction to them. And one of the things I heard you all say was what you're saying. You know, we have to be careful what we're saying. We're Mm -hmm. thanking God. You know, one of the things that we taught our kids some years ago was we don't beg God, Lord, please, if you would please come down here and do this one more time for me. We've, we taught our kids, he's already done it. So our prayers are declarations and prayers of, th- prayers of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, mm-hmm. that I'm healed. Thank you, Lord, that I've received my healing. You know, thank you, Lord, that I'm debt free. Thank you, Lord, that my bank account is full and without toil. Mm-hmm. And I mean, just thanking him. And so what you say, what we say as men and women of faith is, is so important. And I believe that that ties straight into worship. Shout out to Jerry Savelle. He said yeah. a worship is an outward expression of your faith. <laughs> 
Yeah. Ooh. That's all it is. Yeah. Ooh. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. I wanted to hit that because mm-hmm. you don't often hear people talk about worship a lot when they're talking mm-hmm. about faith. They talk about the confessions. They talk about, and yeah. really worship can be a positive confession. Mm-hmm. Just what yeah. you're saying out of your mouth and your love for God. So I did mm-hmm. definitely want it to, yeah. to mm-hmm. hit that. Lady E, Lady E, let me, mm-hmm. let me say this. And what worship can do, because here's the thing we got to say, faith is not magic. Yeah, that's right. Faith is a process. Yeah. And yes. so sometimes in the process, you have to use your patience. Right. Yeah. Sometimes it is delayed. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't come as fast as you yeah. necessarily yeah. want it. And so that's you got to put patience on it. And that's when your worship helps you through those trying times, through those dark nights when you're waiting patiently yeah. for mm-hmm. God. That worship allows you to be strong yeah. Yeah. in the midst of your weight. Yeah. And, and we got to understand that everything is not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Now, God is a miracle worker. He can yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. there are times you do have to wait. And so worship can help you in the midst of that time where you're waiting and it can strengthen you and not make you so weak. Yeah. 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 That's good. That's good, bro. That's good. Yeah. Well, let's turn the corner just a little bit. And this is for all of you married people out there. <laughs> Marriage and faith. I want to hit this because what? is the importance of having agreement. And what should you do if you do not have agreement in faith? Mm. You're standing in faith. Wow. Mm. Mm. Hey, That's agreement for us is everything. Yes. Everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. Because yeah. agreement, it, agreement is like this. It's like, it's like a, 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 a guy who shoots an arrow. Agreement is the pullback. It, it, it gives it gives the force. So when it lets it yeah. go, it can go in a certain direction. It can go with full velocity. It's not going straight down to the ground mm-hmm. because what happens is when you're not in agreement, you can't go as far and as powerful as you yeah. need to go. Yeah. And yeah. so many marriages are dying because they don't take the time to communicate to get into agreement. Yeah. Exactly. It's not about what I like. It's not about my feelings. It's about what we come together and decide to do. And mm-hmm. that way we can put all of our energy, all of our effort, mm-hmm. all of our focus heading in direction that we decide to do. Yeah. And so even in marriage, a, a, a agreement can kill your marriage. It can, yes. destroy, it can make you feel frustrated. It can allow fear to come in and grip you. It can literally hinder everything. Yeah. So, yeah. so agreement is so powerful in your marriage relationship. Yeah. 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 And I would, and I would add to, to that past Roman D and say, yeah, it, it's, it's definitely key, but you said something in the midst of, uh, of you talking, you said communication. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In order to agree, we gotta communicate. Mm-hmm. That's true. Uh, we can we can be in, we can be in faith for something, mm-hmm. but my wife might be thinking one way, mm-hmm. I might be thinking another way, which means we're not in agreement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So therefore, we gotta communicate. Say, hey, babe, I'm believing for. Uh, a house with six thousand square square feet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? With a with a uh, a big entertainment space, mm-hmm. with a pool in the backyard, with this, with that, with this, with that. Mm-hmm. She could have been agreeing for a house, but it's a house with four thousand square foot, mm-hmm. with, with a smaller basement, with no pool. Yeah. So <laughs> technically, we're out of we're in disagreement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we have our faith on a house. But the details are mixed up because yeah. we wasn't communicating. Yeah. So how is that God going to make it come to pass mm-hmm. where we both got two? our faith is on two different things? Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. it happens all the time where couples do that. So the example that he gave, neither one is wrong, right? A 4,000 square foot right. house is nice. Right. 6, square foot mm-hmm. house. But when you're not in agreement, it just it's at a standstill. Yes, so mm-hmm. then people start thinking, well, God is not answering our prayer. It's like, but you, you're you not asking for the same thing. And mm-hmm. in marriages there, you know, people have their personalities, they have their opinions, but it takes really for you to humble yourself and sometimes take one for the team and say, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm, okay, I'm good with the 6,000. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'll take the 6,000. I'll, I'll get rid of my dream of the 4,000 and just agree. But if you don't communicate, Man, and we're talking about being in agreement on everything, even yeah. your bank account. So yeah. this that's not going to be popular for some married people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you have to have the same bank account. I don't understand how couples don't, but you cannot have two separate bank accounts. This is my opinion. 
can't have two separate bank accounts. Mm-hmm. One's tied and one's not. That's probably a whole nother episode. But you have to be on one accord with everything as yeah. a married couple. Yeah, that, that agreement, that agreement is the anchor. Yeah. It, it literally, it, it, it's, it's the anchor. It, 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 it makes it work. Mm-hmm. So like you just said a minute ago, Pastor Roman D, without that agreement, mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. is chaotic. Yeah, everything Mm -hmm. is chaotic. So that agreement within marriage, man, within partnership, within marriage, it's it's very, very, very important because I can be in faith. So let's say, for example, I have a health issue or someone has a health issue. They can believe on their own that God that God has healed them. Mm -hmm. They can receive Mm -hmm. healing. You know, he can intercede on this person's behalf and pray and be in agreement. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to something that that affects both of us. We have to, it's not just intercession, it's total agreement. It's not mm-hmm. me praying and him inter- interceding. If it has to do with both of us, like a house, finances, our kids, anything that has to do with our marriage, and we have we have to be in agreement. So there's different, um, what's the way I want to say that there, there's different um types of ways that we I think we we even come to God for things. So but even, even, that, even, right? even with that example though, mm-hmm. I this goes back to the, what you said earlier about humbling yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh I still need to be in agreement with you it, yeah, on your exactly. faith. Exactly. Right. You know, because again, uh, we have to meet each other uh, at whatever faith level we're at. Yeah. If yeah. you're believing that you can get a supernatural healing, but I'm believing you should go to the doctors and get surgery, mm-hmm. th- I, I'm the ultimate result is for you to be healed. Yeah, right. I gotta humble That's myself right. and say, you know what? If she's believing for supernatural. I'm gonna be in agreement with her mm-hmm. because we know yeah. when two or more is in the midst. God is in the midst. Yeah, that's true. So, so yeah. I still need to be in agreement, true, even if good. it's your personal faith. That's yeah, right. yeah. You, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm reminded of, of a story we talked about a, a, a ox, and, and this ox could pull two thousand pounds by itself, mm-hmm. and they put another ox doing the same thing, and they thought they would go from two thousand. You add another ox would bring two thousand. They would be able to pull four thousand. Yeah. They found out when these two ox are heading in the same direction and pulling, pulling can pull up to. 10 10,000 uh, pounds uh, uh, of weight and they were blown away. But once again, that shows the power of agreement. That's why yeah. the Bible says one will put a thousand and two will yeah. put 10,000. 10, yeah. that, that just don't make sense. Most of you mm-hmm. think yeah. 1,000, 1,000, 2,000, mm-hmm. but it said 10,000. Why? Because of the power of agreement, a power when we come together and try to do something also, we will accomplish it. Yeah. If you read in yeah. the book of Genesis, where it talked about the people and they were building a tower up until God and God said, if I leave these people alone because they in agreement, they're going to accomplish what they're trying to do. Yeah. Here they was trying to build a tower to reach God. Yeah. And God said, if I leave them alone, they will accomplish it. And so he, he changed their language to throw them off. But that shows us the power yeah. that when we come into yeah. agreement, we can do some awesome things. I believe there's some married people listening to us right now, and you're just agreement away from doing the impossible. Yeah. You agreement away to uh, 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 building that business beyond your wildest dreams. You mm-hmm. you an agreement away from having the very best family you could possibly have, and people looking at your family and learning from your yeah. family. Yeah. So agreement is so powerful. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna take a short break, but before we leave for break, I just feel in my spirit that I want to ask the panel a question: What should someone do when they're standing in faith for a spouse to get saved? Ooh. We're gonna take a break, and when we come back, you're gonna find out what we think about that. We'll be right back. Hey, what are you waiting for? Come to WillParkerJr.com. Grab your T-shirt. Grab your hoodie. You can even grab some music. Come on. Welcome back. And if you are just joining us, I'm Lady E and this is Pastor Roman D. And we have our guest, Will and Rochelle Parker. And tonight it's all about faith. It's all about just open in questions as we wrap up our faith series. And so before we went to break, I asked the panel a question about what should a spouse do if they're in faith for their spouse to be saved and come to know Jesus Christ? How does that agreement work when one spouse is believing for the other one to get to know Christ? So I'm going to turn it over to our panel. Lady, I think that's an excellent, excellent, excellent question. Um, I think the first thing that needs to happen is that person that's that's in faith for their husband or for their wife to be saved. Mm -hmm. They first must be a living example. 
Yes. Mm. They must mm. be a lit. You can pray to your blue in the face. Mm -hmm. If you're not walking and living this thing yeah. out yeah. and being an example, your prayer is gonna mean it's, yeah. it's, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna be much. Much. Mm -hmm. That person must be a living mm -hmm. example first of all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they should be studying their word, their husband or their wife, mm -hmm. whichever word. They should see them reading the word. Mm -hmm. They should see them talking to God. They should see them going to church. They should be living out the word of God. Mm -hmm. Meaning, you're not yelling and cursing at me. <laughs> you're not mm -hmm. doing anything crazy. They should be living this life out first. Yep. I think that's the very, 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 very mm -hmm. first step. Mm -hmm. I agree. I love that. Let y'all add to that. Hey, I, I would say, and, and be the spouse you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you a wife, believe it for your husband, still cook for him, still give mm -hmm. him loving, still do all of those things because you're trying to win him. Fasting and praying and, and not getting it and not communicating with him, talking about you saving yourself, that, that's not going to help you. That's not going to help you at all. If you a man and you believe it for your wife, love her unconditionally, yeah. show her the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. Don't don't just read, try to just read the scripture to her. Show her the love of Christ. So if when one day she show up and she start hearing the preacher talking about how much God loves and things, she, you will be her example. And so I think that being keep doing those practical things, because sometimes what people would do is they would do more nagging than witnessing. Right. <laughs> they do more yeah. nagging than demonstrating. Mm -hmm. And what they don't understand is you're pushing them away. Yeah. And what you want to do, you want to be such an example before them that even when they, even if if they're mad at you, they always say, well, boy, they love God. Yeah, <laughs> they love God. They ain't never saying, well, they fake and phony. That's why I ain't never trying to get part of that yeah. religion. They, they going to all that church every week and they ain't doing them no good. No, you have to, like my brother said, live that example, but you have to do those practically. Be their spouse. Love them unconditionally. Don't mm -hmm. talk down on them. Even mm -hmm. if they're not going to church, you love them. You speak well of them. Matter of yeah. fact, this is what you do. You got to watch what you say about them, even yeah. to them or their yeah. friends or yeah. your family members. Yeah. You have to start confessing. You a mighty man of valor. Mm -hmm. You a woman after God's own heart. Even, yeah. even if they don't believe it, you have to speak it. You have to declare it because you're speaking those things that be not as though they yeah. are. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with both of you all. And, you know, one of the things that I've experienced just with friendships um, and sometimes there's a story, a backstory about why people haven't come to Christ yet. And mm -hmm. so being just really patient, listening, giving them that space to be vulnerable and talk to you um, mm -hmm. and not being judgmental and saying, oh, well, you know, this because some people have been traumatized yes, right. um, growing up a around uh, the different around whatever religion their their uh, parents or household practice. And so just really listening and, and being there. And, you know, one of the things I want to say, too, is I know we haven't talked about this, but I'm going to add it to it. Um, is we're not talking about marriages where the spouse is unsaved and he's beating you and treating you mm -hmm. bad, you right. know? Um, and so we're not saying, we're not saying <laughs> to stay in mm -hmm. a marriage where you're being physically abused or verbally abused. Mm -hmm. We're talking about um, someone who's treating you right, but they just haven't come to Christ yet because some people mm -hmm. will say, well, they'll stay in an abusive uh, marriage mm -hmm. and say, well, I'm just still praying for him to come to Jesus. Well, mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for you across town after we sign that divorce yeah, paper, because yeah, yeah. you're not going to verbally or physically abuse me while I'm praying for you to come to Christ. So just, mm -hmm. I just wanted to add that, make sure we're clear about that. Yeah. And, and let me add this too, but for those out there that need an example, and you're saying, man, that sounds good, mm -hmm. but I don't know where to start. There's a great movie called Fireproof. Yeah. Yeah. Fireproof yeah. is yeah. a excellent marriage movie yeah. and basically in this movie for those of you that have not seen it the husband uh got he he got saved mm -hmm. and 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 he started doing these steps he was challenged with some steps i ain't gonna give the movie away yeah. but he had to do everything he needed to do to show how he was really changed and transformed mm -hmm. even when she was being ugly to yeah. him even mm -hmm. when she was being mean to him yeah. even when she she when he was cooking and she was like why are you doing this mm -hmm. he he lived mm -hmm. out this christian yeah. he was following this book yeah. and it didn't feel good but <laughs> yeah. he followed this thing yeah. through and it was success at the end i would say rent this movie fireproof yeah. and watch it because mm -hmm. it's a great testimony on where to start if you're trying to figure it yeah. out 
Perfect. You know, this leads into the perfect segue into my next topic, which is action. And you guys mm-hmm. gave so many examples of just mm-hmm. taking action with your faith. So what role does action play in your faith process and how important is it to take the right actions? <laughs> and when do you know you're taking the right actions? Mm-hmm. Hey, you know what? Uh, uh, actions is, is like is like your your end your reward because here here's the thing here's the thing you can you can believe you can ask you can confess but then if god gives you a strategy or a plan of action and you don't execute it that was that was basically all for nothing that, that's like me saying hey god uh when i was single god i'm believing for a wife i asked him i believe i'm confessing i'm married and then i get next to a woman and then i won't even introduce myself yeah. i won't even yeah. talk to her yeah. i won't even say hi I, you know a woman give me her number i won't even call though that everything i did up to that point point ended up being wasted because I didn't take the proper action. Action lets you know if you really believe what you said you believe. It is a manifestation of your belief and of your confession coming to pass and showing up in the natural. And so action is everything. Yeah. 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 The simple definition of faith is really acting on what you believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the simple, simplest definition you can use for faith mm-hmm. is literally acting on what you believe. I remember a story where um, I was told about a guy that had some car keys and, and he got on top of his car and he said, if I get into the car with these keys and start my car up, I can drive down the street. Mm-hmm. If I get in the car with these keys, put it in the ignition and turn the car, I can drive down the street. And I get, and he kept saying it. And, and, and the truth of the matter is he never did it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he was still on the rooftop believing uh, something. Yeah. But yeah. since he didn't take action, since he didn't get off the roof, open yeah. the door, get in the car, yeah. put the key in the ignition and turn it on and drive, it yeah. never came to pass. Yeah. So action puts everything in motion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you said, Pat, you can believe, mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. ask, uh, but if you got a plan of action or until you take action, yeah, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, it, you know, and just plainly, it just shows that we believe that God's going to do what we believe he's going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, another example is if I pull up a chair and, you know, Pastor Roman and I, we're always joking with each other. So I pull up a chair to him and I say, oh, do you believe, you know, this chair is going to hold you? He's like, yeah, I believe. And I push it and I say, sit down. If he doesn't sit down, he doesn't believe it. That's he either doesn't trust me because yeah. we're always joking <laughs> or he doesn't trust the yeah. chair. Yeah. I mean, it's just that simple. Um, and so we that's that's the way that we show God we, we trust him. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, faith yeah. without works is dead. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you, you saying you want a job, you have to fill out an application. Now, can <laughs> somebody just find you and just call you and say, you know, and give you a job? Yeah. But you know, how often does that happen? You have to put it, you have to put it a job. Application. You, you, you put a, you brought a, a good point too. I think we, we cannot miss. Okay. You said, if you bring that chair up to Pastor Roman D mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. doesn't sit down, mm-hmm. he's either, he's, he either doesn't trust you mm-hmm. Or the chair. Yeah. So yeah. We, yeah. Off, we yeah. often we often put a lot of emphasis on the chair. Mm-hmm. We never talk about mm-hmm. the person. No. Wow. And, and the truth yeah. of the matter is, you can trust God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It says yeah. Jesus is the author and finisher mm-hmm. of yeah. our faith. Yeah. Yeah. You don't never have to worry about trusting him. That's true. Mm-hmm. He's always he and hey, he's always on time. Yeah. He's always faithful. He's mm-hmm. always yeah. loyal, loyal, and he cannot lie. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's one that's one thing you can you you don't never yeah. have to worry about is the person. His yeah. name is Jesus. Yeah. And you know that's that's <laughs> like the that's the power of the testimony, right? When we had mm-hmm. Um, a miraculous experience with God when we've had, mm-hmm. when we've seen our faith actually manifest into what we're believing and we share that story with other people, it encourages them going back again to like your community and the people that you're talking to. If you're the only one speaking faith and believe in God, mm-hmm. it, it, you're going to get, you can, you can easily get worn down and easily mm-hmm. get discouraged. Not saying that you would, but it's a lot easier mm-hmm. than if you're around a community of believers mm-hmm. where, where they're even correcting what you're saying yeah. and saying, no, this is how we speak. This is is what we do have you done mm-hmm. this have you have you have you uh, done in the natural what you need to do to make this uh faith declaration manifest itself so get yourself if it's just one person mm-hmm. that can hold you accountable on this faith thing it's it's so key and so crucial 
to do that. Yeah, because here, here's the thing that, uh, and, and we, we all, I believe we all can say this because as friends, we, we constantly sending one another messages and things of that yep. nature. We're checking up on one another. Hey, how such and such, such and such. And we're believing someone stepping out on faith. We're, we're checking up. Hey, you did this. You did that. You did that. And what it's done is, is, is pushed us all. And, you know, we even have other friends that, that we talk to and, and chat with and check up on. And it's helped all of us elevate our faith to the to yeah, another yeah. level that we're doing things that that if you probably told us five or ten years we may not even believe it yeah. you know you know yeah. we may not believe hey we started a church we may not believe that hey you guys own your own business and and, and will parker jr wrote his first book and, uh, you know <laughs> and everything and so all of us have, because we're connected, we've been able, and we've allowed each other to mm -hmm. push one another, yeah. which has helped us to go to another level. Because I think that's another thing. Not only do you got to have people around you, but you have to allow them to check you yeah, at some true. time. Yeah. You have yeah. to allow them to push you. I, I give my wife so much credit, you know, even with starting a live church. She she saw it before I did, people. I, hey, I, be, I keep it 1,000. Yeah. Yeah. She saw it before I did, but she was patient. She went, oh, you you out of, you disobedient. You ain't walking by faith. Call yourself a man of faith. <laughs> you know, she didn't do, she was patient. She just kept, what is God speaking to you, dear? And the more I start telling her, it's like a light bulb hit me one day. It's like, oh my God. <laughs> hey, I, I'll tell you this though. One night, all four of us was out, and the wives had had enough. They had yeah. enough. And they came and said, Have you asked God? Have you talked to God about stuff? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but but yeah. you need people like that yeah. who see the greatness on the inside of you, yeah. see what yeah. you're capable of doing, even for when sure. sometimes you may not see it in yourself yeah. and be bold yeah. enough to say, hey, I love you. You know I love you, so we ain't got to go through all that. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done A, B, C, yeah. and D? You yeah. know? And sometimes yeah. that's how you overcome. That's how you are able to do things that you may yeah. not thought you was going to do. Absolutely. That's true. I always say, you know, get your body in the right room. Get around people mm -hmm. who, you know, are speaking faith. It's very yeah. important what church you go to. It's yeah. important mm -hmm. of what friends you hang around. And that kind of brings me to my next question was, you know, we always talk about Pastor Ivy Hilliard and him um, talking mm -hmm. about your faith criteria. So what mm -hmm. is faith criteria and how does that set the bar for our faith? You know, faith criteria is you, number one, you being open and honest and transparent to what you need to believe. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's been you being open and honest and transparent about what you need to believe. You know, we, we look at doubting Thomas. We call him doubting Thomas, but his real yeah. name is Thomas. He, he stopped right. doubting. But but we look at him and we talk about and most preachers talk about him like a dog because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, my goodness. He said he, he was honest. If you don't know the story, this is the story. Jesus has resurrected. He's shown himself yeah. to the disciples. Thomas wasn't there. And so Thomas shows up. And they said, Jesus is alive. He said, no, nah, I ain't believing that he said unless i put my hands in the nail prints mm -hmm. unless i touch it unless i seem for myself that's the only way i'm going to believe so that was his criteria that was his standard to believe and watch this you control your criteria because when jesus shows up and say okay thomas you need to touch me go ahead and touch me mm -hmm. thomas didn't even touch him yeah <laughs> Midst of that, Thomas changed his whole criteria that all he needed to do was see Jesus. But we got to be honest with our criteria. Yeah. Do you need to read it in the word? Do you need to see it manifested in somebody's life? Yeah. Have those open yeah. and honest dialogues yeah. where you say, hey, this is what I need to believe. Yeah. And God can meet you at that level and help you. We see this with all people in the Bible. Moses had a criteria. Mm -hmm. Gideon had a criteria. God, mm -hmm. if you yeah. do such and such, then I'll believe. And so you yeah. have to understand, what will it take for you to believe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, yeah. and I echo that as well, bro. Um, I think criteria is real simple. And I think everybody criteria needs to be this. First of all, obey the word of God. Mm -hmm. Obey the word of God. Uh, the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Criteria mm -hmm. number one is you got to get your faith game up. Mm -hmm. How do you get your faith game up? Hearing. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. What are you constantly pumping in your, your, your ear gate? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are you watching through your eye gate? What are you mm-hmm. saying through your mouth gate? Mm-hmm. I think that's I think that's standard criteria to add on what you're saying, um, Pastor Roman D. You got that personal criteria where it's specifically for you, mm-hmm. but the standard stuff is what are you watching? What are you mm-hmm. listening to? What are you saying? Yeah. That is so important while you're on this yeah. faith journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if you're not hearing the word on a, on a constant and consistent basis, you're not growing in faith. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. It comes by hearing, not, not what's heard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, yeah. What you heard yesterday is gone. I ain't building faith yeah. today. Yeah. Right. Unless you're repeating it again, mm-hmm. where you can hear it again. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I think that's standard criteria yeah. to add on to that personal criteria yeah. that Pastor Roman D mentioned. Yeah. I, I just love the question because I'm sitting here thinking about how personally my criteria has changed. You know, mm-hmm. I think being young in the faith and really respecting the pastors and teachers and other elders in my life, it was like, if they said it, that was it. And I was like, okay, they said it and that's it. And then I got older and, you know, think, you know, you have circumstances and situations and you, you're like, I don't know, is it that cut and dry? And then I started having personal experiences with some of the things that I was questioning. And I'm like, okay. So, mm-hmm. so then it, for me, it became, I needed to experience it mm-hmm. so that when I tell it, I'm not telling somebody else's story. You know, mm-hmm. I love the stories of the generals of faith in the Bible. And I love telling my mama's story and my grandma's story and Will's story, but God has given me some stories. Mm-hmm. And for, for me at those times in my life, that was like mm-hmm. my criteria for really being able to process like, oh, this is really how it works because I'm in the thick of this and so this is what's yeah. going on. So I, I, I just love that uh, uh, Apostle Hilliard mentioned even the idea of criteria yeah. and the conversation that you all mentioned. I just, I mean, your responses to it, I totally agree with what you said. Absolutely. It's just so important to, to get mm-hmm. that through your mind is what criteria am I giving God for me to be able to manifest what I desire? And so that kind of brings me to my last point for our panel which is meditation and visualization. Now mm-hmm. we kind of talked about that a little bit throughout our um, other shows as you watch the sermon and the video from mm-hmm. Pastor Roman D. And so meditation mm-hmm. and visualization, I know a lot of, it's more popular now than it was, mm-hmm. you know, maybe uh, six or seven years ago, but sometimes Christians run from the word meditation because they're thinking that it's an Eastern religion tradition and that, you know, mm-hmm. you're not necessarily um, worshiping God when you do it. Explain what meditation and visualization means to you and how you fit that into your own faith practice. Well, let me say this first. Uh, Christianity is an Eastern religion. Uh, yeah. I, I know a lot of people think it, it's, yeah. it's about yeah. well, white people. No, it, it's a it's an Eastern. Yeah. It, it's, it came from that same area as yeah. Islam and, and all that. So, yeah. so yeah. let's, let's yeah. make sure that's clear. It's that's not an American religion. Yeah. It is an Eastern religion. Yeah. And so, but meditation is, is so, so vital valuable and so so important I, I love this commercial it is uh apostle here says this is it's a meditation is an internal commercial on the canvas of my imagination whereby i can have an experience that seems so real to me mm-hmm. and, and so it is something it is you seeing yourself as, as the end result is you allowing yourself to feel those feelings that you have okay you're believing for a house you you know you want a five bedroom house three car garage three levels and so you close your eyes you see that house you see the big yard nicely manicured you see the three car garage you see you pulling your Bentley or your Lexus or your Mercedes up into the car you 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 allow yourself to feel that feeling it feels good it feels good you see my white bed the house you see your huge old kitchen you see you see a nice stainless steel and all that you go up to your master suite your big old bed and you got room, you got an extra area that you sit and you just take notes and you write down stuff. You walk into your big old bathroom with your shower. You may even have one of those showers that don't even need doors. That's how mm-hmm. big yeah. You see your two walk-in closets. You walk in, just look down, look like you're looking down a highway or something. You allow you, but and then as you're seeing all of this, you allow those feelings. Some of you started smiling as I was saying, yeah. and you start getting happy. You allow yourself to feel that way, and what you're doing 
doing is you're training your subconscious. You're yeah. training your subconscious. This is how I'm supposed to live. This is how I'm supposed to operate. This is where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And you see it on the inside. You don't have it in the natural. Yep. But yep. You, when you close your eyes, and you can get so tough that even you ain't got to close your eyes, you can just see it and visualize it. Yeah. And you're allowing your emotions to feel it. And now you will start seeing, you will start seeing big houses that you've never mm -hmm. seen yeah. before. You start seeing places for sale signs that you never seen before. Why? Because your subconscious has been trained by the visual, by the pictures, by the images you allowed to see on the inside. And you do that. I do it daily. I, I, I do it daily. I see 10,000 members. I see us at the, uh, every time I drive past the cable dimer, I say, thank you, God. That's the live church home. I say, thank you, God. You know, my next step, I'm going to go, I'm going to go on the parking lot and I'm going to talk to it. And we, we didn't talk about that. We, that have to maybe be part two another day. Yeah. But, but you allow yourself to see yourself as your end result. Maybe yours is to be married. You start seeing yourself with a spouse and happy with children. Maybe you want to own a business. You start seeing yourself running the business and being able to hire people, interviewing people, whatever the case may be. You allow yourself to go there before you go there. Yeah. Yeah. And Pastor Roman D, I'm going to go there because you, you said that uh, so good. I don't need to repeat nothing you said. <laughs> I need to soak in with people to understand yeah. imagination and visualization. Yeah. But no, I, I think this, I think for the people that can't imagine or having problems with, with visualizing, mm -hmm. they do need to go out to that car lot yeah. and mm -hmm. get in that car. Yeah. Yeah. They do need to go out into that mm -hmm. vacant building or the, or that, uh, uh, a strip mall area mm -hmm. where that business might be. They literally need to take steps yeah. so they can come home and, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and, and visualize and, yeah. and, and same way with, with writing vision boards mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. All those things will, will help you with your meditation yeah. and vi visualization. Yeah. You have to make it practical yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. But for, for those that, that for some reason they can't lock in yeah. on everything you just mm -hmm. said, Pastor Roman D., uh, if you can't visualize, if, if you can't sit there and, and imagine things mm -hmm. and meditate on things, go out there and experience it and come mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. and meditate on those things and yeah. visualize those things, write them down, mm -hmm. uh, Google pictures, print them yeah. off, yeah. do those things because what you see is, is, is a great way to grab it. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. it's hard for you to grab what you can't yeah, see. Exactly. Right. <laughs> you know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, so go out there. If, if you lost your way with visualization mm -hmm. and meditation, go out there and set yourself yeah. up so you can come home and imagine. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think, you know, it could be, for me, it's different. You know, sometimes my meditation is as visual as you all are saying, but sometimes my mind has already been very, <laughs> you know, creative and colorful that my meditation is just that quiet time mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, God, I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to let my mind go through my to-do list or even my wish list. Mm -hmm. I'm like, God, I just need to hear from you. Mm -hmm. And not that I don't have anything visual in my mind. It's not maybe moving as fast as it normally does. Mm -hmm. And that's when I can hear from him about some of those things. Mm -hmm. I like, I love the fact that you mentioned vision boards. We love vision boards. <laughs> and I think what vision <laughs> boards do is they keep you, it keeps you focused. Like, this is what I'm believing God for. So when that new shiny penny comes up or when somebody comes up with another idea, it's like, no, I'm believing God for this. Mm -hmm. And not that we can't be open to other things, but I know for me, I hear the next best thing. And then now my, my attention is divided. Now my faith is divided mm -hmm. and then nothing happens. So right. keeping that vision board, whether it's the poster boards, like some of us have, or some, some of us have Pinterest boards now, just looking at it saying, no, this is what I'm believing God for. It may not have happened. It may, I may not see it yet, but it's already happened. Mm -hmm. And I can't, you know, I'm looking forward mm -hmm. for the manifestation of it. So um, yeah, that meditation, that visualization, that that's huge. So, that's, but you said, huge. you said son, babe, you said that in my meditation, I'm trying to hear from God, Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I'm focusing so I can hear from him. And that's big because we know the word say, you know, uh, uh, God will do exceedingly more, exceedingly more of what you can ask or think. So mm -hmm. when you're meditating and you're thinking, thinking, visualization requires you thinking, mm -hmm. shoot, he can plant something bigger than you yes. was even thinking yeah. in your mind. Mm -hmm. you, we, you was thinking about a 6,000 square foot house and he planted mm -hmm. an 8,000 yeah. square foot yeah. house. So mm -hmm. hearing from him in that meditation time 
Man, that's key. That's yeah. very important. So that yeah. good stuff ha- happens <laughs> about you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, glad you mentioned that. I'm glad you mentioned that scripture too, because sometimes we, with our even with our vision boards and our meditation, we have our mind set on something. But but I'm always waiting for the bigger. I'm like, God, this is all I can imagine. This is all I can imagine mm-hmm. on my own. So I know it's going to be like greater that. to greater than this, and that's even more exciting. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes we we don't get what's on our our board or our thing, and it's like, but He's going to give us succeeding. So I don't even get disappointed. Yeah. I want that mm-hmm. white convertible Bentley though with like the white interior but <laughs> you know since he has something better for me <laughs> I'm, well, open. I'm open whatever you, whatever you want to give me exactly. <laughs> better than that <laughs> yes and, and I would say also uh get your kids involved if you have yeah. ki- if you have children mm-hmm. because yeah. kids that childlike faith man they will take yeah. you to another level our daughter has been speaking that we're going to build our home and here we are like <laughs> what home are we going to buy and she's like no we're going to build and yeah. so it clicked for me one day I'm like well we need to get on board with her like her yeah. faith is at another yeah. level and so when you expose your kids to that as well man yeah. you just imagine where they'll be when they mm-hmm. get you know 15 right. 20 25 30 mm-hmm. if they get it while they're young mm-hmm. and it's never too late it's never too late mm-hmm. yeah. i'm just so excited that uh we got a chance to to come together tonight and yeah. to get yeah. this was fun don't get it twisted mm-hmm. people we're not gonna <laughs> stop talking about faith we everything we do is faith. but this series we're just wrapping up this particular series that we have so we do have some great things coming your mm-hmm. way in the next coming weeks as we wrap up this show i would like for our panel to just take about 30 seconds or so each and mm-hmm. just give you all one practical thing that the people can take away with them today. I always like to, to make it really practical and just at mm-hmm. home where you are because you've gotten a lot of information, yeah. but I mm-hmm. just want you to take that one key thing that you're going to take and practice for the next you know week or month or however long that you're going to take with you so you can begin to walk by faith and not by sight. Mm-hmm. We're going to start with Rochelle. Let's start with Miss Rochelle. Okay. <laughs> you know what? I think I, I love... Uh, just listening to the word every day. You know, we could be listening to ourselves talk all the time. We could be watching TV, all all sorts of things have our attention, but just dedicating a certain amount of time every day and being reasonable. Like if you're not doing it at all, you know, maybe yours is two to five minutes a day. If you're doing that, maybe yours is 30, you know, whatever, up to two hours, however many hours you want to do it, just pumping that, that faith message in, uh, in you. And um, man, that, that will make a world of difference. So that's my one takeaway. I would say, um, I would say practice guarding your gates, Mm. Mm. Uh, practice guarding your gates. And when I say your gates, I'm talking about your eyes, your ears and your mouth. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Become very conscious of what you say and what you speak. Uh, Most of the time we speak against ourselves. We don't even realize it because it's became a habit. So watch what you say before it come out your mouth. Uh, uh, Protect, protect that. It might come to your head, but you don't have to say yeah. it. Yeah, uh, but good. that comes from what you, what are you listening to? Mm-hmm. What kind of music are you listening to? What kind of TV shows are you watching? Mm-hmm. If you're in faith, I would say uh, the practical step outside of listening, because it's part of what she said as well, Rochelle said as well, guard your gates, yeah. mm-hmm. guard yeah. your gates. Don't mm-hmm. lose your faith fight. Um, with your confession. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Watch yeah. what you say. Yeah. Watch what you watch watching and, and, and watch what you're listening yeah. to. Yeah. yeah. Hey, here's my practical one. Go out and get this book right here. Yeah. Be <laughs> one. Foundations yeah. of faith. Yeah. If you don't have this, you ain't serious about your faith. Game. <laughs> Not only did my brother get a book, but then he gave a study guide too. Yeah. So go, that's yeah. my practical. Go and yeah. get this and it will walk you through. It'll be so simple for you. It is step by step. Hey, yeah. I believe your, your four-year-old, five-year-old can read this and yeah. get something out of this. That's yeah. how simple it is. My brother did a great job. You yeah. can go find these books at willparkerjr.com willparkerjr.com and so you know what we want to do this, this is what we can do if you text to this number 816-670-3684 if you text alive to that number we're going to send you a book. The first person to do it, we're going to send you the book and the study guide. I and I'm going to send them a t-shirt. Ooh. <laughs> and we'll send them a t-shirt. 
<laughs> that's a that's good it has been so much fun thank you to will and rochelle parker for joining us the giants in the faith the giants in the faith giving you that boost that you need to walk by faith and not by sight again i'm going to remind you to go to uh, the alive church kc.com and you can get more information on a live church and also we are going to be broadcasting live this sunday 10 a.m on facebook at the alive church kc so we hope to see you here next week and remember to always walk by faith and, and not, not by, by sight, sight.